Hello, everyone. Welcome to this team training webinar. My name is Peter. And I'm a technical support associate here at Upkeep. Today, we're going to dive into the ins and outs of this product for a technician user on the mobile app. So for our agenda today, I'll go over the role of a technician user, and then I'll guide you along navigating the mobile app. And finally, I'll cover how to create and process work orders and provide some resources at the very end. So for this webinar, we'll mainly focus on the iOS mobile app for a lot of iPhone users. All right, first, before we start using the app, we need to know what a role of a technical user is. So these users are those accounts who are frequently closing out work orders, completing jobs, and are most commonly the field technicians. So these users can edit work orders they've create, but not ones that are created by others. They can also take pictures, add them to work orders, or even add status updates. Um, and today, we're just gonna focus on the main one here, just a technician user. All right, so moving along, let's dive into what this looks like to navigate the mobile app as a technical user. Okay, so first thing you notice here is the home page. So this is how it'll look like. Um, if you look at the top right hand corner, there's a gear icon. If you click there and click edit profile, this is where you can make changes to your full name, uh, even email, and you can manage your email preferences, even your push notifications. And then you can also contact our live support. And if you press new conversation, you can start a live chat anytime. All right, so back to the home page. This is where you can view your work orders that are due today. And that'll take you straight to the work orders page here. If we go back to the home screen, we have other quick filters there too. So let's say you have past due work orders or ones that are high priority. You can click into any of these boxes. It'll show you that specific quick filter category. All right, so let's move along. If we click here where it says more, those three lines, this is where you can see a list of all the different sections. Consider this your navigation bar. So we'll go into work orders more into detail later on, but let's click into locations. This is pretty much where you can add and manage your primary and sub locations and view your assets and parts by their locations. And when I say primary or sub locations, primary means like the main building, like building one, a sublocation would be a component of that. So like zone A, B or C would be sublocations to building one. All right, so moving on, we have what are called our assets. So think of these as the equipment or machinery that you're managing. So if you click into each asset, you can view its full range of information. And then there's these subsections here. So you can see their files or even work orders or even their parts associated. Just like locations, um, these are broken down to two tiers. You have what are called your sub-assets, components of the main um, primary asset. All right, so then we have our parts and inventory. This is where you can view your part information. Think of these as consumables, where you're using this day in and day out. You can view your stock levels, your cost, or even work order history for each of these parts. And then moving on from that, we have our meters. So meters are just essentially what are used to tra track specific measures for your assets. So this can be a truck mileage, the number of hours used on an equipment. Um, and this has a lot of historical data in the sense that you can enter uh, meter readings. And then you can also check things like your meter history from here. And finally, we have our last two items here. So we have our people and teams. So this is where you can view the information um, of your other team members that are upkeep users. And then vendors and customers is where you can manage and store contact information um, for customers or vendors that you're contracting work out to or that it's useful for invoicing. And finally, if we move over at the bottom screen where it says requests, this is pretty much where 
um, requesters or external users are using to submit work order requests so that, that admins can approve them. And this is how it looks like on this page right here. So if you look at this plus button right in the middle, this is where you can create things. You can create a work order or a work order request. If you click more options, that's where you can have more options to create other things like assets, locations, parts, or meters. All right, so moving on, let's now discuss the main functions for a technician user. And this is primarily just creating and processing out work orders. All right, so when creating work orders, this is primarily used for when technicians see something wrong. An example could be maybe they're walking down the factory floor and they see a broken equipment or a machine. They would go ahead and create a work order. Now you can create work orders as one-time or reactive ones or ones on a repeating schedule called preventative maintenance. And then there are features where you can add images to them you can scan a QR code for a particular asset or part for a work order. And then finally, with these created work orders, you can process them out. Um, and some of these are here are you can change its status, you can use a timer function, or even communicate with other team members using the updates function. So let's dive in right back into the app and take a further look. All right, so click that plus button right there and click on work order. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a test one right here. I'll just title this test five. And then I can do things like add a description. I can set a priority level if I'd like. Obviously, if it's high, um, it's like an emergency work order. If it's low, it's not as big a priority. I can do things like add an image. So I'm just going to take a picture. I'll take a picture of that, and I'll use that photo. The great thing about this tool is you can annotate things for more clarity. So for instance, let's say, um, theoretically, if this was like a broken equipment, I can just point to a specific area that's broken and make little drawings right there. Press OK. And I'll press Done. And I'll use that as my image um, so that it's clear. And we know that there's a specific part that needs to be fixed on that image. I can do things like assign a specific worker. Um, if you're the technician user logged in, you're automatically going to be assigned. And then another cool feature is with things like adding assets. If you see that barcode icon, I can scan my assets um, or even parts that have QR codes involved. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan this really quick. Once I do that, um, that specific asset that's connected with that barcode image will um, apply there. Okay, so if this is a reactive one-time work order, I can just leave it as is. If it's something on a recurring schedule, say this is a recurring monthly maintenance I have to do, then I would add things like a repeating schedule. Um, you can set a certain frequency by weeks, by months, or even a year, or even add a custom one. Uh, say if it's 45 days, then I can do things like that. And I can even add it on certain days of the week. So if I have a recurring weekly work order, but I just want it on weekdays, Mondays through Friday, then I can just select these things here. All right, and from there, let's just go ahead and submit that work order. Perfect. So now we can go to our work orders to find that one that we created. Now, um, a quick thing right here is if you used a quick filter. So let's say I clicked on uh, high priority. And then you want to go back to seeing all your work orders. All you have to simply do is remove um, any of these what are called our primary filters that are in these uh, rectangular boxes. The ones that are highlighted in blue, you can just remove. And I'm just going to press any under priority. That's where I can see all my other work orders. Okay, so I'm gonna click on test five, the one that we created. So let's talk about processing work orders now. Now, this is the work order we just created. Now, for status, when a work order is automatically created, it's gonna be open, meaning um, it's a work order that's out there. Uh, now work has to be done on it. 
if a work is paused because something came up, say a technician had to run to the store to buy a part to fully complete this, you can put it on hold. Uh, you can put things in progress too. And if it's done, you can just hit complete. I'll put it back to open. I can utilize the start timer option. Once it does that, it automatically changes the status to in progress. So you can use this um, if you need to time your work. And then I'll stop the timer right there. I can also utilize the updates feature. So this is where you can communicate with your team members. So say in this particular example right here, I can communicate with my admin um, saying that this work order is done. And once I at mention him, so using the at symbol and uh, pulling up his name from the dropdown and then typing in the message, then he gets that notification. And then finally, um, another neat thing you can do with this is um, if you have a lot of work orders to track, you can also set a personal reminder. Um, say this was due maybe like a week out and you wanted to remind yourself maybe a few days uh, beforehand, just to give you um, a heads up. When you set these personal reminders, if you have your push notifications enabled, um, then you'll get a reminder for this particular work order. All right, and finally, we have resources to provide additional guidance that you need in case you need uh, troubleshooting assistance or even just general questions. So that wraps up this team training webinar, and I thank you for watching this video. So until next time, talk to you soon.